I have a confession. So remember that one time a few months ago I made a self-destruct video like this and I said I needed help to prove that anyone could code and we made a coding puzzle that looked like this. Well, so the thing is, I lied. I already knew you guys were smart and you could figure out the coding puzzle. We were actually secretly testing something else and the results were extremely fascinating and statistically significant. So as a refresher, your goal is to get this blue car to the finish line by building a simple computer program that used these coding blocks. And when you thought you had a good code, you would hit the run button to see if the car can make it all the way to the end using your commands. But here's what you couldn't have known. We secretly assigned six different versions of that test. Half the test had what we call school rules, which means if you hit run and your car didn't make it all the way across, you lost five points. The same way you lose points if you get a question wrong in school. And the other half are what we call mastery rules. That means you don't lose any points if you try your code and it doesn't work. There's no penalty for trying and failing. And the second knob we turned to vary the test was the messaging you received after you ran the code. Positive messaging encouraged you to keep trying and not give up. Neutral just stated if you were correct or not. And negative tells you to be careful not to mess up and puts the focus on your failings. So think right now of these six flavors, which you think would have the highest or lowest success rates. And because over 50,000 of you engaged in this puzzle, the results you're about to see are highly significant from a statistical standpoint. Here's what we saw. The people who tried the hardest based off number of attempts and succeeded the most were those who weren't penalized for failures and had the positive messaging. And those who quit the soonest and succeeded the least were those who got points off for getting the answer wrong and had the negative messaging reminding them not to mess up. And the reason this matters so much is because this is how the US and most educational systems around the world are structured. Sal Khan, the dude who started Khan Academy, has an awesome TED talk on this topic. He points out how it's absurd that if I take a test and get a 70%, that points out the gaps in my understanding. My teacher has identified 30% of the material that I don't get, but the next day, you just move on to the next chapter. And what's worse is the next chapter is often building on principles that I didn't understand in the previous chapter, so it creates this snowball effect. And it's weird that we accept this because that's not how you learn something like martial arts or a musical instrument. You move on only once you've mastered the previous level. And this mastery concept is intertwined with something called the growth mindset. With this growth mindset, given an identical learning opportunity, you will actually learn and succeed more. Sal offers a few solutions to the educational system in his TED talk, but what I really like is teaching more young kids to code with simple programs like our blue car exam. I personally think that learning to code should be a requirement in school, just like learning a foreign language is. Not just because it's super relevant in today's workforce, but it teaches you to think a certain way and really reinforces this growth mindset because you're testing and failing your code over and over again to quickly gain understanding and mastery. And to that end, my college buddy Kelly, and I want to be perfectly clear, I am not getting paid in any way to say this. In fact, I actually saw what he was doing and I asked what I could do to help. He started a free after school program at his local library for young kids to learn and work together and teach each other how to code. And it was so successful and popular, they decided they would expand this program to any library that wanted to offer this free after school program for kids in their community. I've seen it in action and I think it's a big deal. And he doesn't want your money, this isn't some kind of lame Kickstarter thing. But if you look at the results of the tests that you participated in and you think that learning to code is at least something that can help enforce this growth mindset and math mastery learning, and helping get the word out to your local library is a huge help. So I had him create a simple web page where you can go on there and enter your zip code, and then it will show you the closest libraries to you. Then you can pick your favorite one and your favorite method for sending them a quick note. You guys know I'm a big fan of science and education and people doing good things, and this checked all of the boxes, so I wanted to pass it on to you. And just like last time, if you are awesome and you do this, I will randomly select one person to win an iPad Pro, and we could also do a Skype call and talk about whatever you Want. Last time, my new friend Ian, who is a freshman studying mechanical engineering at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, won the iPad. He actually reminds me a lot of me at his age, only he's way cooler. So that's it. Use the link on the screen or in the video description to find your closest library. Oh, and finally, two quick announcements. I'm going to be back on Jimmy Kimmel on March 22nd. I have some April Fool's Day prank ideas. Pretty awesome, so you're going to want to check that out. And then I will see you back here in seven days for an invention I've been working on for three years. I finally got it working, and I don't want to give too much away, but it has to do with coding and dartboards.